Hi everyone, I'm Asha, an Akashic Records reader, blogger and podcaster. In this series, we will demystify the Akashic Records by bringing to you bite-sized contents on frequently asked questions relating to the Akashic Records. We will also explore topics relating to spirituality, as well as practical application, learnings and reflections in the Akashic Records. My Akashic Masters are very excited to join us in this journey. We send much love, light and blessings to all. Welcome to episode 49 on From Obedience to Discernment. For most of my life, I have always been a very law-abiding, conforming and obedient person. In everywhere I go and in everything I do, I always make it a point to obediently and stringently follow the rules, be it the laws and regulations, the workplace policies, and even the unspoken rules of engagement with people around me. As a legal counsel, I routinely advise clients on the applicable laws and regulations and to review contracts and advice on queries in a manner that adheres to and aligns with these laws and regulations. It is what I excel at naturally, without exerting much effort. The nature of work also complements with my highly logical mind and meticulous persona. Harnessing my creativity to define my own rules is certainly not my forte. Hence, I take comfort in relying on the workplace policies to cover almost every imaginable scenario at work. Be it the instruction manuals on data sharing, code of conduct, and even step-by-step -step guide on what to claim and how to claim for specific grants. As much as possible, I always stick closely to the rules. Even when interacting with people, I have a knack of picking up people's preferences, lingo and accepted norms quickly. All these bits of information come to me easily due to my tendency to quietly observe everything from the sidelines. This information would then be stored in my memory, from which I will retrieve and update from time to time. As I am often mistrusting towards others, I would rely on this information to make a judgment of the person concerned. Is he or she a good or bad person? Trustworthy or not? What is his or her motives, agenda or intentions? What do I need to do next? Most of the time, I would rely on this information to quietly blend in with the rest, in my desire to be accepted by others around me. I usually conform to people's unspoken requirements and expectations in a bid to avoid unnecessary conflicts or confrontations. In recent months, however, I started to question and rethink my default operating mode of obedience. Earlier this year, I was asked to attend a senior management meeting at a last-minute request. In response to certain audit observations and to assuage the higher authorities, a division had extensively came up with the mitigation measures and policy without consulting us for legal advice. I was only roped in for urgent legal advice the day before the meeting. By then, Almost everything had been finalised, pending management's final approval to go ahead. During the meeting, I was placed in the spotlight for advising that the key mitigation measure, as intended and worded, cannot be enforced at law. 
Instead of relooking into the matter and exploring viable alternatives, several management members became highly combative and aggressive, all ready to tear down my legal advice and question my personality. It was as if my advice had stirred up something terribly uncomfortable within them. It felt as if they were expecting everybody, including me, to simply obey and conform to what had been committed to the higher authorities. A rethink in such scenarios, even if necessary, was unacceptable. In the end, the management decided to accept the risk and proceeded in deviation from my legal advice. This incident left a deep impression within me. I couldn't help but question the wisdom of the management in deciding the way they did, knowing well that it was contrary to the established legal principles. It also made me realise how much I have given my powers away to others at work by assuming that the management would make the best decisions in the interests of the stakeholders. Unfortunately, all that I had witnessed during the meeting suggested otherwise. To me, what had unfolded during the meeting was simply a battle of ego and pride. Everybody wanted to win. Nobody wanted to lose, even if none of them had any relevant subject matter expertise. From then on, I started questioning myself. Do I simply trust the people in charge for doing the right thing? Do I not question everything with a healthy dose of scepticism? In recent months, across many countries, the unvaccinated people are placed under tremendous pressure to obey and conform to their government's strong push for them to be vaccinated. This is despite strong evidence suggesting that the vaccines do not effectively protect people from being infected as well as a rising number of reported adverse cases of death, disability, heart inflammation, tiny titus, and blood clots, etc., that are associated with certain vaccines. Unfortunately, across many countries, the government continues to relentlessly push for their citizens to be vaccinated. While it is often couched as if the free will of the unvaccinated people are being respected, the actual measures suggest otherwise. Increasingly, the unvaccinated people are being excluded from shopping malls, attractions, overseas travel, and even physical workplaces. These measures, in turn, have compelled many unvaccinated people to opt for vaccination in a bid to secure their jobs, livelihood and freedom of movement. At this point, perhaps we could allow ourselves to consider these questions. First, why are the governments in many countries relentlessly pushing for their citizens to be vaccinated? What do they stand to gain from these mass vaccination campaigns? Second, why are the governments in many countries not openly disclosing or even withholding specific data on the reported adverse cases associated with certain vaccines? If the vaccines are beneficial for our long-term health and well-being, why are we not apprised of or given full access to all related data so that we can truly make an informed decision? Third, why is the mainstream media in many countries 
vigorously promoting vaccination? Who owns, controls and funds them? Can we trust them to provide independent and unbiased reporting? Fourth, what are our rights as citizens of a country? What rights have we given away to our governments to decide on our behalf? Do we continue to trust them to do the right thing? Or is it time for us to take back our powers to decide for ourselves? As an unvaccinated person, the recent measures have forced me to shift out of my comfort zone. From being a passive and obedient member of society, to learn to publicly speak up and stand up for myself and other unvaccinated people. What is the intent behind the exclusionary measures targeted at the unvaccinated people only? Is it to protect the unvaccinated people? Or is it to protect the vaccinated people? Or is it meant to punish the disobedient members of society? Or is it to strategically pit one segment of the society against the other? While I do not purport to be an authority to answer these questions, I firmly believe that everybody has the free will and choice to question, reflect and consider What is their version of truth at every stage? Importantly, amidst the daily barrage of information everywhere, do we allow ourselves to practice a healthy dose of skepticism in everything that we receive? As I continue to discover the truth for myself at every stage, I welcome you to join me on this journey. As I learn to step out from my default operating mode of obedience, it doesn't necessarily mean that I take the other extreme end of the spectrum to retaliate, rebel and oppose. To me, it means that my heart and mind are open, ready and willing to receive and consider all permutations of information as presented to me, with the ability to discern for myself what is truly aligned to my highest good at every moment, to be my own decision-maker amidst all these chaos, instead of conveniently giving away my powers to someone else to decide on my behalf. To accept that I may not always be right, I may make mistakes, and to honour my decisions made at every stage with love and compassion. I'm light, I'm divine, I'm empowered. You are light, you are divine, you are empowered. Masters, do you have anything to share with us today? Dear children, we know that it is a difficult period of time that many people are undergoing in their lives right now. There are many permutations of light and dark, as well as many layers and versions of truth, bombarding one's consciousness right now. Amidst the daily barrage of information and seeming chaos everywhere, What would you like to choose for yourself today? What is preventing you from standing in your own light and truth as a divine, sovereign individual? No matter what others portray you to be, always remember that you are the light, you are divine, and you are infinitely precious and priceless to us. We are here to guide you on your soul's journey. Call upon us to assist you to see through the darkness, deceit, lies and falsehoods being perpetuated everywhere. 
That said, the truth can be quite unsettling and discomforting. It is not always pleasant and well received. Are you ready to embrace and receive the highest truth in all levels of your being? Know that we are always here to support you. Trust that you will be divinely protected and guided. Ask and you will receive. With love and blessings, Asha and Akashic Masters. If you would like to assess your Akashic Records to receive deep clarity, guidance and healing, you may want to consider a general or themed Akashic Light reading and healing session with me. Know that your session is unique and will be customized for your needs. I will be fully guided by your Akashic Masters throughout the session. Check out my website for more details. Thank you for tuning in to this podcast. If you would like to read about my dialogues and reflections with the Akashic Masters, you can visit my free blog at asha-akashicrecords.com. Till next time, take care.